Hi, colleagues. So as always, we'll stand by the queue from uh, Ghana Television and then uh, we'll go. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and uh, welcome to our Minister's Press Briefing, uh, which we're starting this week on Wednesday. I think on Sunday night, His Excellency the President gave us a general update, update seven, on Ghana's COVID-19 response program. And uh, today we are starting our briefs for this week, consequence thereon. Today's brief will be in about four parts, about four parts. First, we will reiterate the government response as has been enhanced in some cases by His Excellency the President. He spoke to the nation last night and in one case as has been amended. Then we will invite our colleagues from Noguchi, who are leading the entire testing program to help us with some details on the data of tests and the analysis thereon. In 10 days, I'm sure you'll notice that there have been about three things um, about the data. There are questions, very genuine, legitimate questions that some of our colleagues in the media some members of the public asking about the data and its analysis and with the view that um, because all of this is driven by the data and the science where there are questions about the data and its analysis we have an obligation to allow the experts and the analysts to explain the data and the analysis and to provide the necessary understanding while at that, to provide education for the majority of us who are not virologists or data analysts, etc., who could benefit from some education, give them an opportunity to also uh, provide education. So apart from the legitimate questions, you would also find that there have been opinions that have been expressed by some persons. Um, we'll focus on the persons who understand what is being discussed, the, the, the expert opinions that have been expressed and the kind of responses uh, that will be given to those expert opinions. Uh, as I'm sure you are aware, when it comes to opinions, it's not everybody who knows about every subject to express opinion on it. And then we would be briefly, while dealing with the tenet analysis, we'll deal with um, another trend is coming up. Some persons who also want to assign ill motive and intellectual dishonesty to the professors and the experts who are doing um, the work. We'll deal with that all under the bracket of data and its analysis. We'll also today speak about case management and case count. Um, and then there are reports that uh, Ghana has a model that projects that three million people will get sick, and what, 15,000 will die. That, uh, or those reports are attributed to the president's advisor on health, Dr. Nsiasari. I think he was on a television show last night and made some comments. We'll give an opportunity to uh, join us and share with us what sort of model this is, where it comes from, and what it really means um, for all of us. So good morning once again, and welcome. Let me start from the very first, very simple one, and then I would uh, later proceed. Now, on Sunday, His Excellency the President updated the country on where we are on Ghana's COVID-19 response program. You would recall that three weeks earlier, he had outlined a number of interventions. One, the preventive ethics, including the washing of hands, the using of hand sanitizers, 
most importantly, social distancing uh, and related matters, which the uh, analysts suggest has a very high potential to cut transmission rates. So by introducing that, whatever transmission rate we were having, that alone is expected to cut it as a first step. And this excellency, the president mentioned a number of restrictions or retreat some restrictions, including um, the closure of the borders, um, the shutting down of schools, and other public engagements, including social and religious engagements. Again, when you come to the closure of the borders, it was to cut the uh, vertical importation, which was our first risk. The banning of all of these public activities also to cut down as a second layer the kind of interactions that people generally have, which could also then help reduce our um, rates of spread. Then he um, proceeded to announce an enhanced testing program. The value of that enhanced testing program is that when you compare the test numbers coming from other parts of the world, many of them are testing people who are sick and symptomatic who are coming to the hospitals. God adopted a significantly different route, which is that we will go out into communities and test even persons who are not sick, who are not symptomatic, persons that we call at-risk populations. The view is that if you do that and you find these persons who have been exposed early, you can give them supportive treatment. Then they don't have to fall sick and come and look for hospital beds and ventilators. So in other directions, while they are talking about hospitalization rate and how many people are on ventilators, Ghana's approach is to do an enhanced thing, find people early, give them support so that we don't have to get there. And then the president mentioned the fourth thing, which was that to allow us to get as much data as needed, he was restricting movement by executive instrument in greater Accra and greater Kumasi so that the health experts could go out there and do a lot of these tests and give us data to inform the next line of action. The president never said that he was imposing these restrictions because we were at X number of cases. Because if he did, then by logical implication, you see that then if the case count goes higher, then maybe he should even extend the lockdown or lockdown some more. He explained clearly that he was imposing these restrictions to allow health experts to go out there and to get us data. Two weeks on, the president updated the country that there was a lot of data in. Unfortunately, he is of the view, based on the advice of the experts, that they would like to have one more week to complete the gathering of their data to inform the next line of action. On Sunday, the president updated the nation that that data was in. It showed, among a number of things, um, a composite emission rate of about 1.5, which if you break down into various categories, you will see the, 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 the infection rate, or what you call the positive rate. Or on the website, you see positivity rate among various cohorts, but 1.52 positivity rate. And the president explained that based on a number of factors, about seven factors he outlined, he was ending or adjusting Ghana's response as follows. Number one, the preventive etiquette, which we have been teaching and which the science says has the ability to cut the transmission rate. He was maintaining all the old ones and he was going to add one more, which is the wearing of masks. The wearing of masks, we are told, even has a further high potential to cut the rate of spread. So the president of the government did not lower or reduce the first intervention of uh, preventive etiquette. Rather, it has been enhanced by adding the wearing of masks. In the past few days, government is working on how to ensure that as much of those are made available and people can also make their own and we put out the guidelines shortly. Then on the second subject of... Um, restrictions, closure of borders, schools, and all of those things. His Excellency the President announced that we are maintaining all of those. Again, that one has not been reduced. Item number three, testing. And as we have made, the value of testing is that you go out early, find people 
mostly asymptomatic or early exposure, you can give them supportive treatment, then they don't come into a sick bracket to require hospitalization, etc. He said, our testing, which today Ghana at the highest in Africa when it comes to test per million of the population, we are even going to enhance it a bit more, further enhancing the testing regime, which will give us a higher advantage in finding if there are more people early um, uh, exposure than uh, to deal with them. And then on the final subject of restrictions, or lockdown as they call it, he said, while in Accra and Kumasi, those were being lifted because the objective had been achieved. The objective of giving them the opportunity to go out and test had been achieved. Now, dealing with the hot spots and the other districts across the country, they have an eye on areas where if it becomes necessary that there's a lockdown, they would impose a lockdown and kill in those particular uh, hot spots or districts, as you may call it. Therefore, the narrative or the view by some that we have lowered our response is incorrect. As we have gone through and tried to demonstrate, you notice that many of the instances we've either maintained it or we have enhanced it. And even in the case of the last one, the lockdown, which was just later Accra in Greater Kumasi, and not even across the country, uh, that amendment has been explained um, of the new measures that are put in place. The role of the security agencies, we are told in the coming days, is going to change um, from enforcing a lockdown to helping us comply with all of the other measures that we are going through. So that's just a quick reiteration of the government response program. Government has not lowered the program. Indeed, as we have gone through in some of the instances, we've actually enhanced uh, uh, those, and we'll provide some more details uh, later. Now, one of our strongest tools is our testing capacity and our testing capability. We also invite uh, Professor William Ampofo, who is the head of virology at Nugui. And they are also leading the entire testing program, which is coordinating a number of labs assisting Noguchi uh, in this testing exercise to help us intimate questions that have come up about our testing. We can rely on that data. Professor Ampofu, please join us with that. Just a moment for them to sanitize the podium. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Honorable Minister, for this opportunity to discuss our testing program. <clears throat> um, first, I would like to uh, thank my colleagues at um, Noguchi at the Kumasi Center, KCCR. Harry Services Directorate Lab and the CSR Lab all together working day and night. I think there are close to over 150 people who have worked tirelessly to described on Sunday. Now, if you've been to Noguchi recently, you'd have seen the white building, the entrance of our institute. This building actually facilitated the process. It has enabled us to test thousands of samples within the recent couple of weeks. How have we done this testing? As you have heard, you cannot see a virus. So to test for the virus, we actually extract the inner component of the virus, and it's called ribonucleic acid. Now, how do we collect the sample, or what kind of sample do we use for the testing? Because this is a respiratory virus, we look for the virus in the respiratory pathway, okay? So we take swabs from the nose, swabs from the throat. We also take sputum, which you bring out from the throat. And then we also have another method where we introduce salt water in your nose, and you blow it out, and it's called nasal lavage. 
So these are the four type of specimens or samples we have used in Ghana to test for the coronavirus. When these samples arrive at the lab, whether it is Kumasi or Noguchi or the VSD or the Public Health Reference Lab, we go through a process to enable us to utilize the reagents or chemicals in, an, in a very efficient manner. We simply pool the samples. What is pooling? Pooling just means that if you have 1,000 samples, you put them in pools of 10, and therefore you test at a time 100 pools. So in a short time, instead of testing only 1,000 samples, you actually test 10,000 samples. This simple arithmetic is what some people cannot do. If you want to understand how we are able to utilize our existing facilities using a method which was derived in 1945 for screening samples right from the blood bank, this is a very efficient way of proceeding. The other thing we've done is that to ensure that we are actually not diluting the sample when we mix 10 of them together, we simply took one positive sample which was at the limit of the detection of our system and diluted it nine other samples which were negative. Therefore, we would determine that if we pull one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten together, we are still able to detect the first sample which is at the limit of the positive detection. Again, with our partners, we have the late kind of equipment to be able to do this direct detection. So, as we started, we realized that as the number grew, we were actually pooling five samples and then we changed to a pooling of ten samples. And this simple protocol was followed both by colleagues in KCCR and of course it's now adopted by our colleagues here at PHR BSD. So in a nutshell, you can understand that it is not impossible to have tested 68,000 samples as His Excellency the President reported when he addressed all of us. Actually, since he addressed us, we have actually tested close to 30,000 samples, again, using the same method, because each time we do 10,000 samples, it's actually, you know, a multiplication of a simple initial number. So please do not be surprised if in the next couple of days you hear that we have tested 100,000 samples in Ghana. It's, it's, it's just a matter of, what do you call it, um, multiplication and addition. Now, how efficient is this process? We don't just test. Each test that is done follows policy control step as indicated by the manufacturer. We have actually used four different PCR kits in Ghana. Two of them provided by the World Health Organization and the Africa Centers for Disease Control and also the West African Health Organization. So you can understand that the test kits that we've used are according to international standards and verified by these organizations to ensure that the process we are doing is in line with the applicable procedures. Also, we have established a common quality assurance program where we have exchanged samples between KCCR and Noguchi to ensure that samples that we say are positive at Noguchi are also checked by KCCR. And we have also done the same thing for samples from KCCR. Furthermore, the WHO has established an external quality assurance program, and we will be taking part in the external quality assurance program. I understand that the Africa CDC also starting such a program for us in Ghana. You've also heard about rapid diagnostic tests. And the policy that the FDA, the Food and Drug Authority, has adopted is that all such rapid diagnostic test kits have to be evaluated and assessed for their ability to pick up a true positive, which we call sensitivity, and the ability to rule out a true negative, which is called specificity. So this process is currently ongoing, and we have established a panel of blood samples that are truly positive and that are truly negative. We are going to we are in the process of reporting back to the FDA on which kits, therefore, are most sensitive and most specific and therefore suitable for use in Ghana. This will then enable us to do more testing, but the results will be in combination with what we call the PCR. 
so that we can accurately describe as somebody having been exposed, accurately describe somebody as having been infected, and accurately describe somebody as having been previously exposed. It's very important to understand the distinction between these categories, or else people will think that they have the virus, whereas they have just been exposed and they have actually recovered. I think that um, this is a sufficient explanation of everything that we are doing so far on ten. If there are any specific questions or issues, I think that the, it's brought to attention and we will once again come here. But I must thank all my colleagues in the background who you do not see. They have worked tirelessly day and night in two shifts, making sure that we are able to provide the testing to support the COVID response. Thank you very much. Prof, you're touching my podium. You have to use time now. Uh, Professor William Ampofo is the head of virology. Uh, at the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research. They are coordinating all the tests across the country. Prof will join us later uh, to help us understand a few questions. So we have admitted here on this platform and on several other platforms that out of this about 20,000 currently getting to 100,000 in the medium term tests, there are some tests that have been done more than once. Why? Because, for example, if you look at our recovery rate, 99, what it means is that those persons were tested three times, the first positive test and two negatives. At least, if you look at those who were in mandatory quarantine, they were tested at least twice. That is 1,030, and then they were tested about twice. So you will find some tests that have been run more than once. But Ghana is reporting that we have done about 80,000 tests. We have also admitted, nobody has hidden it, that some of these tests have been done more than once. The question is, how many of these 80,000 tests have been done more than once? And does that take away from the view of Ghana's test numbers? If, for example, by the time you that mathematics for us, it is 0.5 percent of the tests that are repeat tests. Does that mean that the 99.5 um, percent of the tests, singular tests, which showcase Ghana's test per million or Ghana's test capacity, should be thrown away, should be discounted, that therefore numbers are duplicated? Prof, we we'll need you to help us uh, later. Um, it fits into the question of whether we are reporting number of tests or people tested. Because the big question is put out, are you reporting number of tests or people tested? But the real question is, what we have admitted about the double test, what percentage of the total test is it? And does that negate the essence of the entire testing exercise? So, uh, Prof, you have to help us to understand um, all of this. I want to quickly move to case management and case count. Before I come to this model, because Dr. Nsiasa, we are all scared. You say 3 million people and uh, 15,000 would die. We are all scared. So we'll come to you to help us with the details. But I want to move to case management uh, from the Ghana Health Service. Dr. Patrick Kuma Abouaji. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. I'm using your sign. Um, good morning. Um, um, we will just give you a brief of where we are as of this morning. As you know, we have the cases categorized into general surveillance, um, travelers, enhanced surveillance, and then the total. Under the general surveillance, as of the 20th of April, which we are reporting, we have 401 cases that are reported positive. We still have the 115 uh, travelers who are and tested 115 through enhanced contact tracing. In the last three weeks, we have about 638 positives, bringing the number to 1,154 cases set today. Out of this, we have had about 120 on having recovered a change from the 99 in the last reporting. Of these recoveries, 82 have come from the Ghana East, 
UGMC has reported 17 recoveries. Rage has three people have recovered. The seven military hospitals have recovered, recorded four recoveries. Terminal Hospital one, Ashanti region has six. Wa has uh, index case has one, and Tamale has six cases reported. Of those um, who are well and responding to treatment, including the are symptomatic, that comes about 1,021, accounting for about 88.5% of our cases are well, no symptoms, and people who have mild symptoms are responding to treatment. We have half four people currently in critical or moderately severe condition. Only one is on ventilator, and these are in Ghana, Ghana East and uh, uh, UGMC as we speak this morning. So, in a nutshell, this is what we can share with you. A significant number of the people are currently in isolation. Thank you very much. Dr. Patrick Abadi, thank you uh, for that uh, update. So now we have 120 recoveries. Doc, did I hear you correctly? 120 recoveries? Doc, 120 recoveries. 120 recoveries. Okay, and uh, making our way through uh, gradually. Um, we'll also invite you later to respond to questions that our colleagues may have. Shortly, I'm going to invite Dr. Nsiasari to come and explain this model of 3 million people to be infected, 15,000 uh, to die, to come and explain this model. Before then, it is my understanding that uh, chief executives of state-owned enterprises, um, the state-owned enterprises themselves, or entities, is it the entities or the chief executives? The chief executives of the state-owned entities, those that come under SIGA, um, have also come together with a contribution which they want to um, make available uh, to the 19 relief fund. Honorable Deputy Minister for Information, please join me. And let me invite the representatives of the executives to join us and to make that presentation. May I quickly mention that the COVID-19 relief fund, that money does not come to central government to utilize. I think it's an important clarification we have to make. That money, please come to the front here. Please come to the podium, yes. That money does not come to central government to utilize. It goes to the fund which is administered by a board of trustees, a board of trustees um, led by the former Chief Justice, Madame Sophia Kufu, and they are going to administer that fund in accordance with the law that was passed by Parliament. Social distance observed. So in accordance with the law that was passed by Parliament, the trustees of the COVID-19 relief fund are the ones who will apply these funds um, in accordance with the law that was passed. It does not come to central government. So please let us take note accordingly. There have been those who have um, donated items in kind that have gone to various ministries and departments uh, that are handling parts of it, like items, uh, etc. And uh, we are grateful to them as well. So, Honorable Pius, thank you. Very quickly, Mr. Very, very, very quickly. All right. Thank you. Um, we're doing this on behalf of the CEOs and deputy CEOs of all the state entities. And this is an initial contribution. We still have a way to go. And under what we call uh, the COVID uh, support project for the state CEOs and deputies, we will still be making more contributions. And also, this is not coming from the institutions. These are the individual contributions of the CEOs and the deputy CEOs. Thank you very much.
So CEOs and deputies uh, and SIGA for Cotin, we are very, uh, very, 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 very grateful. Dr. Nsiasai, please join us and explain this model to us. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Yes, yesterday, I was at TV, and I gave a hypothesis, which is a hypothesis that WHO put out, which is based on population of the country. And that's the hypothesis I gave, that if Ghana stayed without doing anything at all, that's what will happen to us as a country. That's the 10% of the population having the inf inf being infected and 20% of them getting sick and ab about 50% of them getting very seriously ill. But I said, and I'm sure they should have quoted me on that, that that is the case in Africa. If I base on the, and the data that we have, we have realized that our actual figures are far, far, far below what WHO has quoted. And it's because when we saw the WHO hypothesis, we were a bit scared. So we put a lot of things in place, which the Honorable Minister have mentioned, especially the preventive etiquette, which has become a new normal in country, social distancing, ban on social gatherings, and also ban on... Um, limitation on rest or restriction on coming into country because we realize that most of the problems that we have in this country were intended. So after doing all these things, and also we restricted movement in two of our great metropolis to get the data that we are using now. So from seeing the data, it has shown clearly that in Ghana, we won't go in that direction. And luckily, his Excellency, the President, has added more measures, like wearing masks, where everybody here is wearing masks. Because if you wear the mask and you go out, and then your brother and your sister is wearing masks, you don't bring the disease home. As we have always been seeing, the virus no legs. It's human beings who carry the virus. So I want to just make it very short that it's not true that Ghana will have 3 million people infected before we read the peak. So we will never see that. Because as we speak now, as Dr. Abwaji said, the number of deaths in the country is nine. Nine deaths. If, if, if you calculate it according to the percentage of people who have been infected, it's 0.7%. So it's nowhere near the 5%. If you look at the number of tests that we have so far, we have 1,154 positivity which comes about 1.5% positivity people that have been tested. And if you look at even a negative rate, it's about 98.5%. So we are not getting near, or we will never get near the WHO hypothesis. But as we speak now, there are a lot of people who are doing modeling. There are different modelings coming out. Where's the scenario if you do this, if you do that? But the modeling is not even static. It's dynamic, according to the data that we see every time. So at the end, Ghana have a model for this uh, COVID-19. And I can t I t also assure you that when we look at all what the measures that government has put forward, and everybody stay at home when he doesn't have to go out, there will be no much problem. But that's not it that we are out of the doom. So please, this is what it is, and that is how our affairs are. And as the president said, we'll be back by data and science. Thank you. Um, Dr. Nsiasa is the president's advisor on health. Just to reiterate the point you have just made, and let me see if I get you correct. Doc, let me see if I'm correct. 
what you are saying is that this is your comment that 3 million people could be infected in Ghana and 15,000 out of that could die is based on the WHO hypothesis or model. But as a second matter, you are saying that even what observing in Ghana, the actuals, does not correspond with that one. And that thirdly, what you are saying is that the kind of uh, measures that we have rolled out, we expect that that kind of global model that they have put in place, which births these numbers, when you feed into it the Ghana population, it will not happen now. Okay, I think I understand you well now. Um, if you watch the clip of that interview, I think the journalist was also asking you, is it a hypothesis or is this a model? I'm not too sure you caught and answered that part well. And it's part of what has fed into the person out there. But the clarity you have given us this morning, um, we are grateful. We'll have an opportunity to have our colleagues ask you some questions um, later. Um, I think these are the major briefs we have for you today. We're going to take questions at this point in time. Before we do that, it is my understanding that the National Health Insurance Fund has a uh, quick contribution that they want to make. Dr. Selby, can you please join us? Colleagues who have questions, please show by hand, two at a time, come to the podium. Um, and while we're waiting for you to come, Dr. Selby is going to come. So, Professor Ampofu, I've already given you one question um, about uh, number of tests and number of persons and whether that takes away from the narrative about Ghana's testing efficacy. We also had a second um, a question that we have also noticed coming up, that um, if you look at the, the line graph, and there are different types of graphs, if you look at the, the data that the Ghana Health Service provides, there's pie chart, there's a bar graph, there's a line graph. There are some who say that if you look at the line graph, it suggests that you are suppressing the data that you are recording some cases and not uh, reporting. I'll need to add that to your questions and explain that to us. So National Health Insurance, this is a check of how much? 250,000. Oh, wow, 250,000 CDs. Um, and we are very grateful uh, for this contribution from the National Health Insurance Authority. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much. Ordinarily, you should be paying for our medical bills. But since you are not paying, it means you are supporting the payment of... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have questions. Go ahead, Kriyo. So first thing number one, to the Director General of Dr. ICSR, what are the possibilities on the Ghana Health Insurance website actually mean? Is it that is it the same as the Ghana. And then no, my second question would be, are we reporting the number of tests or the number of people tested? I think I've asked that one already. Okay. And then out of the case counters are today, how many of them are part of the 18,000 backlog of samples the President spoke about? And then if someone is tested and asked to self-isolate, while the person awaits the results, how do we ensure that that person really isolates him or herself and do not, I mean, step out at all? And my last question would be, um, government's this plan, is on an analysis of research, and then research institutions like Noguchi. Dr. Nsia, um, how are we ensuring that those we say they should self-isolate indeed self-isolate? Um, I will leave that one for Dr. Abouadje. The 18,000... But how, how is it contributing to some of the new numbers we are reporting? Again, I'll leave that one for Dr. Abwaje. Incidence of COVID-19 in Ghana and positivity rate. Uh, maybe Professor Amfu and the team, you may want to uh, confer and decide who will answer that one uh, for us. Let me go to the next set of questions. My name is Omla Adom. I work with Joy News. Uh, my question goes to Ghana Health Service Director General. We still have issues of inadequate or absence of PPEs in some health facilities. For example, the anchor for leprosy and... Insufficient general, PPEs, right? Yes. Okay. And absence in some cases. Very well. The anchor for leprosy and general hospital, for example, the Cape Coast Metro Hospital, 
Chifu Pras, so a Buta Dunqua medical facility. We have nurses there reaching out to us that they still do not have PEs to work with. Mm. So they're asking the questions, where are the PPEs that are being delivered to facilities mm. on a mm. daily basis? Uh, also today, there was a report that at Mamobi Polyclinic, a midwife there uh, told us that they are selling PPEs to their workers because they do not have provision from the government. So my question to the health service, where are the PPEs that we have been told about that they've been distributed to all these facilities? And also to Dr. Abwaje, on Monday you told my colleague in Esme on a program on Joy News called News Desk that our curve is flattening. Um, Which I of the curves, by the way? The Hospitalization, recovery, no. um, positivity or Positivity. What? He said the positivity curve was flattening. The question was put to him, at this rate, do we have our care flattening? Then Dr. Baji mentioned yes. Oh, is that so? And okay. now that we have 1,154 cases and expected that some more results of a test are going to come, do we still say that our care is flattening? At Fantastic. This Doc, while you're answering that question, it's important to explain what they mean when they say the care is flattening. In some jurisdictions, you see them talking about the, uh, uh, the hospitalization um, number. Some are talking about death. Some are. So what are we talking about? Colleagues, we have to nuance this because a lot of these things are new to many of us who are even purporting to talk about it. So it's important we have a clear understanding of what the concept means and therefore uh, certain nuance on. So, Doc, please take advantage of it to educate us what we mean when we say the curve is flattening. Is it the hospitalization curve, death, recovery, new infections, etc., etc.? Um, just a quick comment uh, before we even proceed. Health workers who have challenges with PPEs, we have had you also call 311, give us the feedback so that we can quickly feed it to those who are monitoring the supervision. The gaps can be closed faster that way. But I'll let the uh, doctor respond to um, that specific question about the hospitals you mentioned. Yes, sir, TV3. Yes, uh, my name is Godfrey Turnham. Uh, I want to find out uh, what is taken into consideration uh, in uh, putting somebody under home management. In the what? Home management. Yes. Yes. And also, uh, how are you monitored? Sorry, I didn't get the first question. What is taken into, into consideration? consideration. Somebody escapes under home management. Okay. Yes. And what the determines the decision exactly. to treat somebody right. at home? Right. Okay. And are they monitored? Because there are concerns that uh, people are too sure whether these people are monitored well and then make sure that they are, they are, they are really adhering to whatever uh, they're supposed to do. Very well. So the, uh, the fear is that they might be in the public to, to, to infect art. Very well, Thank very you. well. So Dr. Baji, what determines the decision to manage some people at home? And then how stringent is the monitoring of those who are being monitored at home? The first set of questions are done. Um, then let me proceed to get some, some answers. Maybe let me do the policy question very quickly. So Dr. Nsiasai, the policy question. The research institutions moving forward, what is the policy in how do we want to ensure that they are uh, made very relevant in our health delivery system? Please come. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, if you are you look at the president's strategic overview or the strategic thing that he wants to do. Among them is one, limit and stop importations, detect and contain cases, slow down community spread, care for the sick, impact on social and economic life, and the sixth one is domestic capacity and reliance. In fact, the president said, we want to use this opportunity to increase the domestic capacity of all sectors including research centers. So we want to come back and be where we were before. I think you mentioned during the Ebola period. We don't want to finish COVID-19 and then come back and say that we don't have, for example, capacity to do testing of all epidemics. Epidemics will continue to come from time to time. So we are going to use everything that we have to make sure that we strengthen all research capacities, including Noguchi. Noguchi is for the sub-region, for fact, Africa. And now we have KCC, we have all the other researches. There are three research institutions in the Northern Belt, 
in the south, in the middle belt, and also in the coastal belt. We want to increase and strengthen all of them. In addition, we also want to go out of this court having infectious disease centers in three ecological zones, one in the northern zone, one in the rainforest zone, rain forest zone and another one at the savannah of zone. And this is in addition to building the capacity of uh, our local productions and the rest. So this is what the, our strategic direction is, and we are going to make sure that it happens. Thank you. Thank you. Ghana Health Service, please join us. Um, so it's my understanding that the questions of positivity incidents um, of COVID-19 in Ghana will refer that to Noguchi. Uh, but Ghana Health Service, you want to help us very quickly, Dr. Bedisa Akodie. So how much of the new cases that have been reported are coming from the, from the 18,000 back? Then when you finish, I'll go to Dr. Abouadje for the other questions of the case management. You want to help me out? Thank you very much, Honorable. Um, the simple answer to this is that we have quite a good chunk of this being part of the um, specific percentage. But then, as you sit here now, we need to back and then pull this out and share okay. in the public. Thank you okay. very much. Grant you that space um, to do that. Thank you. Dr. Abba, do you want to join us? How are you ensuring? So first of all, what goes into the decision to manage some people at home? How are you ensuring that um, they are monitored? How are you ensuring that those that you see, they should self-isolate? They are really self-isolating. What do you mean when you say the care flattening? And what do you say about some areas that they still complain of insufficient uh, or absent PP? I think about four questions. If you can join me. Four questions. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, maybe I'll start with the uh, uh, insufficient PPEs. Um, as was mentioned, a certain amount has been pushed in. Um, so you mentioned specific hospitals that do not have. We will follow up and see why is it that they do not have. Uh, because we have actually increased the number of PPEs that have been distributed through the rings. When one says um, the curve is flattening, there are several aspects that goes with it. Um, how many deaths are happening? We've been at eight now to nine over a long time. So means that there's no any increasing in the number of deaths. The number of admissions are not increasing. And so that can be also also the damn percentage positives are not increasing uh, over the years. So when you look at that, you can see where you are not, you can see a cascade of going up, both admission, there's everything. So we are not getting that. So that's what is it. There's, there are several a key, three key reasons that is used in detail whether the somebody can self-isolate. And if you do not have a comorbidity, you are positive you do not have a comorbidity. That means that comorbidity, you don't have any serious disease in addition to the COVID. Let's say you are diabetic, you have tension, definitely you self uh, you will not be able to self-isolate. If the home environment is inappropriate, or if you have an appropriate home environment, we believe that you can be able to have enough space and isolate without interfering with any other person, that'll be fine. Of course, we also look at the fact that is there somebody who is likely to cooperate and be disciplined? And those are the three things that happens. When you are there, Every day, either you get a call or you get a visit to see how you are doing. And we we'll determine once the situation changes, you are likely to be readmitted into uh, the facilities. So um, I think these are my questions. Thank you very much. So I'm going to invite Professor Ampofu to deal with um, the specific questions on testing. And I have some other questions on testing that some of the other media colleagues have brought us. Um, let, me, let me put them out now. Those that you are ready to respond to, uh, you can. Then later we can um, re-invite you to respond to the rest. So there's one about the number of tests and the number of people tested and whether it makes any difference in the analysis that we have. Because I've seen um, a lot of commentary that, oh, they're talking about number of tests. They are not talking about the number of people testing. But it's important to help with the numbers so that all of those who are following at home can understand. Um, I think 
this question has been related to any time frame for government of Ghana's 3 million infection projection. I think it's been answered by Dr. Nsiasari uh, in putting into context that comment that made. Um, okay, so you please take this. Uh, thank you very much for the questions. Um, I think I'll go to the one that is about the chat on the Ghana Health Service website. Looking at the bug, I think it's a line graph. Okay. I think um, it's, again, simply a matter of scale. If you actually amplify, amplify the, the line, the, the, the values indicated, and you draw a line, you actually uh, see that um, the, the, there is no discordance between the data that is being reported. Um, I'd like to suggest to Ghana Health Service to use a bar graph that would, for each time point, represent clearly the value that is being projected. Because the line joining two points gives the wrong impression that the values in between the two points are increasing exponentially. And that is not correct. Because what the Ghana Health Service reports is purely dependent on the rate of reporting by the individual laboratories all creatively presenting the data to the Ghana Health Service. So now we have the KCCR, we have Noguchi, we have VSD, and we have the PHR. So they're having to accumulate all the data at a specific time point and then present to you. That is not directly equal to the rate of transmission. You will have to extrapolate back to the actual date that the sample was collected. And that is the kind of analysis that currently they are trying to do. And that's why you hear mention of a backlog. So once we're able to sort out the backlog, then they will be able to calculate the rate of infection, they will be able to present data on incidence, and we'll all understand how the spread has actually taken place. So once again, we are trying to have what we call all time, the date that the sample is collected, and then the date, if it is on the same day, then the Ghana Health Service will be able to discuss incidence and spread. And that's why uh, His Excellency the President said that testing is being enhanced, and we hope that we will be able to cut this um, duration from time of sample collection to time of reporting to within 24 hours. The Ghana Health Service is introducing what we call a barcode system. We wish we had done this from the beginning. So each sample we have a barcode. The geographical location of where the sample is collected will be understood. The sample will arrive in the lab. The barcode will be read. And then the results will be transmitted electronically from the lab back to the central database. This will therefore shorten the time, and uh, we will therefore be able to process many more samples more efficiently. So we really welcome the introduction of this, and we uh, are grateful to the Ministry of Communications for helping to facilitate this process. There's been a question on providing data on the actual number of tests conducted. Um, by KCCR and by Noguchi. So I'll share, share something with you. Um, today, the data that we had from Noguchi was that we had processed 76,921 samples. We had actually tested 70,921. So this gives us a backlog of about 6,000. We've been able to improve our rate of uh, detection, as you heard. So we hope that we will be able to clear this backlog by the end of this week. For our colleagues in Kumasi, as of yesterday, they had processed 25,219 samples. They had tested 15,380 samples. So they have a backlog of about 10,000. And if you look at the testing capacity, you understand that, as I told you before, we have actually uh, four labs working together in Accra, and there's just one lab in Kumasi. We have a staff strength of about 15 to 20. They are doing two shifts day and night, but they have uh, a limited capacity. Whereas in Accra, 
we have you know, more machines, more PCR machines available, and we've had over 150 people working three shifts 24-7. Uh, so that counted uh, for the uh, uh, better or faster rating. Now, I hope that we've understood that the number of samples is approximately equal to the number of tests that are reported. There has been some discussion about the testing for the recoveries. Recoveries we have right now is 120 people. If those people have been tested four times, that's 480 samples or 480 tests. So the retests are insignificant compared to the total number of tests that we've done. And actually, we have a separate database for those who have been retested. So when we provide the cumulative fix to the Ghana Health Service, it excludes those who have been retested. So I, I think this point should be made clear that the retesting does not affect the uh, data that is reported. And yes, what Ghana Service is reporting is the number of individuals who are tested. Let me repeat again. Each sample is accompanied by a case investigation form for that individual. And actually, the reasons we have a backlog is that, unfortunately, due to some uh, uh, issues in the sample collection, we have had some samples that have had no forms. Okay? So we have not been able to report and process these particular individual samples. And we are, in some cases, we have had them to be resampled. New samples have been collected. They have been retested. So what you get from Ghana Health Service is the individual, that particular person's results. But of course, medical science, we don't put a name to a result. You get a test result. But these are test results of individuals and are not just samples. Again, to clarify that, I told you that we have four kinds of samples that we collect. Throat swab, nasal swab, sputum, and nasal lavage. We combine all such samples from one individual to make one sample to test. We do not test them individually. For those who have actually been tested, you find that you have given both a throat swab and a nasal swab, and they are put into the same container. This is just to improve the efficiency of detection of this respiratory virus, because it is in the upper respiratory tract. So we want to go into the nose, we want to go into the throat, and we want to see if, if you have been infected, the virus is present. Professor Babu, let, let me please interrupt you. Yes, we need please. some clarity. Uh, on this. Yes. And again, we are doing this because not all of us scientists, etc. Yes. But many of us are expressing opinions. Yes. So it's important we get educated. Um, the number of tests that are reported. Yes. To what you are saying to the effect that we should not even worry about discounting those that were repeat tests because it's reported is based on the case forms. The actual um, human beings it's not about the samples or the test. Please explain that so that we all okay. get it. Because I was even going to discount the 80,000 by whether it's 2% or 1% yeah. and see the real effect. Okay. But please educate us so we all flow with you. Good. So let me start again. Each respiratory sample is accompanied by a case investigation form. Dr. C. Dubekun, who is in here, refuses to accept any result from me if he doesn't have the case investigation form because he needs to understand where that particular individual has come from. So each test result is based on the sample and the case investigation form. That's why we're able to tell you that people have traveled. That's why we're able to tell you that some people have not traveled. You don't have travel history rating on the tube. It's on the form. And that's where we derive the data from. So every result that you get is from an individual. The CA 1,000, 70,000, 1,200 tests a day are individual their data. So, back to our capacity. Because we identified that our capacity is 1,200 a day, we decided to pool the samples. So, our capacity, yes, we actually run 1,200 samples a day, but that is made up of 10,000 individuals. So, when you break down, we're able to report the individual results of those 10,000 uh, individuals. The retesting for people to recover. The Ghana Health Service protocol is that you must have two consecutive negative PCR results. So, of course, those who were detected at the beginning of this outbreak are those who have achieved four consecutive test results over a period of, say, three weeks. If, for some people, the virus is cleared early, then they will probably have three PCR results. But those counts for the repeats, for the retests of people who are positive, 
is in separate database. It is not counted amongst those who we are screening for the first time. And as I said, even if you add them, for what we have now, for the close 80,000 uh, individuals have been tested, that will just 480 uh, test results. That is insignificant. Now, I think that um, we will be looking at how we can improve uh, this process. There have been some delays, and we apologize for that. That's, those, those have been due to uh, 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 circumstances beyond our control. I think one other issue that um, I'm very proud of my colleagues that will be able to do is I've seen one report questioning how we were even able to conduct these tests with reagents and what resources because the airports are closed, there's no passenger airplane. There are cargo planes, FEX, DHL have done quite well and we have received resources through these particular uh, airlines. Also, don't forget, we are research institutions. So before the outbreak, we had supplies available. And in fact, one uh, uh, major effort is to replace those resources that we have used for the testing. And therefore, that question about the policy is something that is strongly being considered, both by the Ministry of uh, 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 Science and Technology, also the Ministry of Health and by the Ministry of Education. And the policy is being put forward so that these research institutions get an annual budget line to enable us to provide you know, uh, quality uh, work towards uh, medical and public health in Ghana. Thank you. Um, colleagues, we're going to take a final batch of questions and wrap up uh, after this. There are a number of other briefs we have for you, agriculture, trade, a few others. But today we wanted to dedicate time and attention to deal with questions about the science and the data. If there are any questions, we would like to take them. If not, we'll be wrapping up shortly after a few uh, closing remarks. Okay, so um, this is guess, yes, ladies and gentlemen. As we said from the beginning, it is fair to raise questions about the data and the science. And even for the academics, they believe in uh, preview. And so it is fair to raise legitimate questions about the data and the science. And we're happy to bring the process of virology and epidemiology and et cetera, et cetera, to come and answer those genuine questions. What is not fair is to impugn all motive or intellectual dishonesty to the professors and the doctors, the lab technicians, and the experts who are breaking their backs around the clock in trying to get data to help us solve this problem. That one is not fair to them. It is fair to ask questions, and we'll do our best for them to answer the questions. But what is not fair is to impugn ill motive and intellectual dishonesty to these experts, these doctors and professors who are breaking their backs on the clock to do this work for us. I think what we should be doing instead is to be encouraging them and supporting them and not to be throwing their work out of the window. A last comment on opinions. Um, we continue to encourage our colleagues in the media to help us report the fact and to raise the questions. That's all fair. When it comes to opinions, there are experts. We, the lawyers, will tell you that when you go to court, it's anybody who professes an opinion. We have what we call expert opinion. If it's about ballistics, you bring a ballistics expert to give expert opinion on ballistics. If it's about uh, rocketing or whatever, you bring an expert in that area. We want to encourage us in the media that when it comes to opinions, let's get the experts in these areas to give opinions. You report the facts. You raise the questions. And let the experts do the opinions. One repeat point that this is not the time to encourage politicians and commentators, I mean social commentators, to be out there out opinions which, as you check, sometimes are not informed by the kind of expertise that is required. We do ourselves a disservice as a country. So one employer in the media, 
there are a lot of these experts out there, they are dice. The Ghana Medical Association has provided a bit more of this. As for the experts, they have their own conversation. I'm sure you heard him distinguishing between bar graph and line graph and why they should. They can have that conversation. But let us not we those who don't understand these things now to be uh, preferring to put out opinions, sharing them, confusing the public. We need the public to follow what the scientists and the experts are saying. And so we improve. Let me say that briefly in three. I think the colleagues from UTV are asking me to say it in three. Um, the ayah can say, say, who has seen Bisebia? Why the house will be Bisa about data and science now? One more, a senior, a body of unions, a pen who named Diano. Who are questioning Bia? Yes, sir, who to me Bisa? Yet the umber bamba Biano. Data and your president in a data. No, yeah, 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 data. No, 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 no. The whole West Africa and Africa, Omudia Kutni, our viral research, who are questioning a legitimate Ubisa. Yes, and draw for your human say, you better report it, yes, see. You say, yeah, you're coherent for the Ayahu, Nyeka. I question you why you're Bisa. Now, yeah, any say, yeah, and say, you bet not be being a Yaka, and I used to say, they are experts in the Omnimidian, Omuditro. Intellectual dishonesty. And okay, yes, sir, you bought or more Germany or mine in our grand pass. The Bibrimin now be a boom, a jew moody. So, who to studio Nasa, who can send me a suggestion that they are being intellectually dishonest? Sabi, Gana Nina, oh boy, a form, and ask Abia de Almoyano, or more Boapa no more can be be a Yano Corre. In your century, you man, no, no, we don't need to do that. A banner of Jean Trea. Adventure opinion. Me ma jini. E do some pempen so ya. Ye wo mo e wo nim die. E wa sembi mo ma chra jini. Doctor fo wano kura ni. Ye gu mo ho. Ye wo mo. Ye so wo mo ye infectious disease specialist. Be epidemiologist. Ubi wo wawo ye dompe doctor. Ubi wo wawo ye nipa a jini ho doctor. E nti se ye kan pandemic. Ana se yare a ti a te se wo wia si a fane ni na. Ana yare a ti a te se wo gana. Epidemic. Once a mana, a cassania, or more yet, Juma or Laba, a ceremony yadu. Yes, so be our sorry, and also okay, and you miss me to imagine. Yes, ah, Yeni Anome Tifia, a person of Motia, see a GD boy, a man, Nanti, Quan Passono, or because I didn't know Crown Possemity, say, he can't read us to say, Yam Panty, Minty. Nothing to read you money, and Yen, ye, Tibes Ceremon. Yen Candia Yahoo. Cost you a while, Yen Bissako Sano. Nebana Jin Chera, Yen Fat Epets, no. Yes, I bring the politician for any social commentators. Moms, you mean Bibia Babibia, and yes, I bring a frefro, Tibesremo, Samuma, and Penifon, the other virologists, epidemiologists, etc. Put me from Crampon or Muni Wimudin Como. Now I know a boy on Comana Quetch. Colleagues, we want to lend, uh, uh, end it here. We're very grateful for your time. Uh, we believe we'll have one more briefing before the week is over. Thank you so much for your time.